This Hello. Is why, this is why you need to have an apple. I do have an apple. Oh, it is? Yep. Never mind. I can't make fun of Mo. All right. Hi, guys. Hello, everybody. How's it going? They can't Oh, actually. yeah. <laughs> I sometimes forget. Like, it's so weird doing lives that people can't respond. I guess you can write comments. So. Yeah. Yeah. Just respond when you, when you hear it so Mo can feel better. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm not just talking to myself. That'd be great. Um, today we're going to be talking about float tank sanitation, if they're sanitary, how clean they are, what we do to keep them clean, what it's like at a home float tank, and things like that. So I guess we'll just dive right in and we'll start talking about our filtration system. So our filtration system, it's a one pump system. We just recently upgraded, maybe a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, and it fully cycles through all the water in 45 minutes. And so all of the water will have been cleaned within 45 minutes of turning the filtration system on. And we usually recommend to turn the filtration system off when you're floating and then just kick it back on once you're done floating and yeah, it'll keep the water clean, keep it moving. Um, there are more high-powered filtration systems that centers used, and they can cycle through all the water within 15 minutes, even faster. And so if you want to upgrade to a faster filtration system, you can do that. But just for home personal use, one that cleans through it in 45 minutes is perfect. So. Yep. Yeah, so 45 minutes, and so you probably want to let um, some people actually like to turn their, you. I mean, they're designed to always be on the pumps uh, all day long, um, except for when you're floating. That's the only time that you turn it off. Um, but uh, they're designed to run all day. Some people decide to actually turn off, you know, turn it off so it's not running all day. Um one reason is to save hydrogen peroxide, basically. So our, our pump also has a UV filter in it. So it's an added uh, benefit or, or water cleaning deal. Kills all the bacteria and viruses and everything in there. So, um, but it also kills hydrogen peroxide, which is our other uh, cleaning agent. So um, basically, um, some people, you know, you want to, I guess the point of that is you just want to have the pump running for at least you know three four hours a day you know probably and if you want to you know do the extra effort to turn it on and off and time it for four hours you can do that or you can let it run you know for all four or all day not all four hours all day yeah just to save on some hydrogen peroxide <laughs> so lisa just commented that's nice to know it is nice to know because you can run through hydrogen peroxide pretty quickly mm -hmm. with the uv filter just since we upgraded to the more powerful filtration system. So the UV light kills microorganisms, like what Randall said, and that's built into our filtration system. And then, so on top of having a filter, on top of a UV light, we add hydrogen peroxide, which is just another cleaner. Mm -hmm. And something that we don't have yet, but we're testing is ozone. And so ozone is another sanitizer that goes through a vent through the filter and just helps clean everything. But we're still testing it and, yeah, seeing how it works with our tents and in the enclosed environment. But I think some float centers do have ozone, correct? Oh, for uh, uh, actually a lot of float centers use ozone. Um, so just so everybody knows what ozone is, it's um, – it's natural it's uh you guys can't see outside right now in salt lake but it's super cloudy and rainy right now um and whenever uh whenever like with each lightning strike that happens uh, uh like billions and billions of oxygen molecules are getting split into three atoms um or, th or three maybe not three atoms but three protons or some something about the the, nu the nuclear <laughs> the so nuclear scientific. science <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, something's getting split into three and um, it makes oxygen the mo or ozone the most uh, powerful antibacterial known to man it's there's literally nothing that can clean better than ozone 
Um, so that's why it's actually, if you own a hot tub, you have a ozonator in your hot tub. It's just a really low powered uh, ozonator. Um, and so that's why they still use bro, uh, chlorine, chlorine and bromine and so forth. But um, what we're trying to do is figure out a way to build a, an ozone system to where it eliminates the need for hydrogen peroxide um, and probably even the UV light, you know. So it's uh, basically it's going to cut down probably five, ten minutes off of uh, maintenance each week, you know, if we can figure out how to do that. But um, it's also very dangerous, you know. It's, it's good in, in small quantities, actually, but uh, in too much quantity that will kill you pretty fast so <laughs> yikes <laughs> so yeah you want to make sure you have that right and on top of all these different filters UVs ozone which will totally clean and sanitize your water in 5 to 45 minutes just depending on which system you have there's also just weekly tent upkeep and we talk more in depth about this in other videos if you look on water care maintenance but basically, you're just checking water levels each week, making sure there's enough, enough hydrogen peroxide that it's keeping it clean, um, making sure the pH levels are balanced, and then maybe once a month, twice a month, just wiping down walls, making sure everything's kind of clean that way. So float tanks are very sanitary, to answer that question. Even if you're going to a float center, you really don't have to worry about like floating in other people's germs and whatnot. It's really clean. Even though it is a benefit to have your own tank. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, maybe just for sure not have to worry yeah, about that. Yeah, just for like comfort, peace of mind. <laughs> um, well, one thing on that note, some people, are, or at least I do, um, so when you get your hydrogen peroxide that you use for the water cleaning, you know, you'll use, because we use 35% hydrogen peroxide, so probably an ounce, maybe two ounces a week is what you'll add to your tank. It's very, very powerful stuff. Um, so I have a spray bottle basically that I pour some, uh, a cap full in there and then dilute it with water um, to make it more like what you would buy from the store, like 3% uh, mm -hmm. hydrogen peroxide. And that's what I use to, like when I get in to do a float session, that's when I'll do my, my tent or tank maintenance. I'll take there, just wipe it all down. So if you're you're already going in there to float, might as well take a spray bottle in there and a rag and just do that part. You know when you need to. Yeah, uh, makes it super easy. That's a good call. Just get it all done, and that's a really good way to keep it clean than just wiping it, because otherwise you're just wiping water around. <laughs> yeah, so get a little spray bottle diluted with uh, uh, less powerful hydrogen peroxide, and then that'll be a good way to. Keep uh, all the surfaces inside the uh, the tank uh, clean. clean. You can also do it on the outside of the, the tank if you need to, but um, that's up to you. The inside is the most important part. Yeah. And then lastly, you will do this at every float spa, and we highly recommend it at home, but you rinse off in the shower before you get in the tank. So you're just getting all oils, lotions, everything off, getting like – extra hair off, dead skin cells, things like that just off of you. So you're more or less pretty clean when you're entering. You're not bringing in a ton of dirt with you. And so that's just an extra step that keeps it, makes maintaining water a lot easier. Keeps yeah, it a little have, more sanitary. We always have to yell at Mo to remind her <laughs> yep. to take a shower before she goes. Gross. We, we, we have a tank we all use here. And she, yeah. She always needs a reminder. I don't know if you can put that all on me. <laughs> you don't know who's making it messy. <laughs> Very uh, true. But, but yeah, showers too. You're, and it's just a water shower. Nothing yeah. else. No soaps. I don't know if you said that. but I didn't uh, say that. No, you're not using any soap. No shampoo. Anything. No just conditioner. Water. Yeah, it's just to rinse stuff off of you. Otherwise, if you put any soaps or lotion or um, – shampoos you're gonna bring that into the tank with you which it's not ideal yeah don't do that <laughs> or you'll have a lot more cleaning to do yeah it just so. leaves film on like a little filmy look it's not bad it's just like soap film on the top of your uh, surface of your water which uh, we have a scum bug that'll clean that off there but it yeah. you know you're just to 
make your tent, you know, uh, water maintenance last longer. So, you know, in between maintenance times, uh, you just want to take showers. It makes maintenance a thousand times easier. Yeah. So awesome. I think that's pretty much all we have to say about cleanliness and sanitation of float tanks. If you guys have any questions, um, just ask them, just comment them, and we'll be watching this video forever. So even if we're not live, still comment, and we will respond to you. Um, any last thoughts? Mo didn't mention one oh. uh, thing that she typed. She always makes our script, which she does a very good job. Yes. Um, what happened? I don't know.